Hi everyone, this is Yin Coyle with my partner Matt Coyle. Today we're going to have a topic about inflation and interest rate. So Matt, would you like to introduce yourself first? Well, as Jing said, I'm Matt Coyle and she's Jing Coyle and we are local real estate agents operating in the great state of Massachusetts, primarily the Metro West region. And today we're going to talk about interest rate and inflation, the two I's. Right, and that's an article that we recently wrote and you can find the link down below mm -hmm. this video. <laughs> so yeah, man, um, you just published the article on the Natick patch. Right. I think that was a good summary about this topic we're talking about. Can you first give us a summary and what people want to take away from today's topic? Sure. sure. So basically what, what inspired the article was the Federal Reserve raised interest rates for the first time um, in a long while, uh, prior to 2008 if you will, uh, by a quarter of a point. And um, since interest rates has a big impact on people's purchase of a home, uh, we thought we would talk about it again. Um, not because a quarter of a point is a big deal, it's not a big deal at all, but it's a big deal in the context that we have high inflation and the Fed said that it's going to raise rates an additional seven more times this year. I know, that is a scary number because it going to be, might be bring the interest rate to five. Right. Exactly. That's the yeah. You're talking. You're talking about the uh, thirty-year fix rate. Yes, right, thirty-year right, fix. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the rate I'm talking about, they raised. They 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 have a policy rate called the federal funds rate, um, and they're talking about raising the quarter point each time. Which, uh, to be honest, that's the minimum. Wow. I think it could be more, and I it probably should be more. And we'll talk more about that. Yep. So okay, why they raise the interest rate first of all? Well. One of the major policy tools that the Fed has to fight inflation is interest rates. Um, if you recall back in the uh, mm -hmm. 80s, the last time we had inflation rates this high, about 40 years ago. Yeah, we Paul, talked about that last time. We did. I'm just going to revisit a little bit, but Paul Volcker, who was the Federal Chair Reserve at that time, head of the Federal Reserve at that time, mm -hmm. um, raised rates to 18%. So, um, actually, that's, that's not true. He raised the federal fund rip to some astronomical amount, like 14%, mm -hmm. and mortgage rates were like 18%, so um, really high. And the whole idea was to burn inflation out of the economy. So, um, right, you know, so inflation was like 7.8% 7, 7 back then, and, you know, today it's about 79 and interest rates were well above that. And the whole idea was to bring the excess money supply down because that's what causes inflation. It's just too much money in the economy. I see. Rel relative, to out relative to output. Right, right. So, uh, okay, can we step back a little bit, talk about what is the inflation? Well, inflation is basically a general increase in price levels across all goods and services. Mm -hmm. um, some people think of it as a um, as a tax, um, an unlawful hidden tax. tax. Yeah, a hidden tax, an unlawful yeah. tax. Thank yeah. you. Um, but it really does. It reduces your purchasing power, power of your dollar in your pocket or savings that you have in a bank. Um, you know, they're thinking about it this way: if you're earning one percent in a bank account, which is pretty good mm -hmm. by today's standard, it's really not good, but. That's a pretty good rate considering what we what we get. Um, right. Inflation's like seven point nine percent, so we're we're losing about seven percent of our money each year because we're not compensating with higher interest rates because inflation's outpacing the rate of growth in your money. Yep, exactly. The purchase power has been reduced by that. Yeah. So yeah. You, so the, the, the example I always use is let's say last year you had um, ten dollars and you bought ten apples. This year you can, ten dollars, you cannot buy ten apples. Buy, buy nine, Maybe, buy nine, nine apples yeah, or something like that. Something so, like that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what are the costs for the inflation? Well, the cause of inflation, um, to be blunt, is is the government. Their excess spending uh, and the Federal Reserve having to print money to keep up with the huge amount, huge deficits that our government runs up. Yeah, uh, we, we, we heard the news that are always talking about because of war, because the pandemic, 
But yeah. mainly you say it's because the government spending. Yeah, because the, the, the inflation is all about, you know, the quantity of money exceeding the level of output in the economy. Yeah, the printing paper. And who, who controls the money supply? It's the Federal the Reserve. Fed, it's the, the government. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a chart that we put in there that shows the federal budget deficit for the last 20 years. Yeah. And I think last year we were at $3 trillion deficit, budget deficit, annual deficit. And, and the yeah, year before is. was like a uh, pretty comparable amount. Right. And they're already talking about another $3 trillion deficit for the following year. So um, we just can't do it. You know, you can't print money um, because when you have too much money, it devalues the dollar. Um, it's not greedy businessmen. It's not you know consumers spending too much. It's not trade unions asking for too much, too higher wages. Um, it's it's really a function of government spending, mm -hmm. overspending. Overspending, yeah. So let's talk about the real estate. Uh, so you said during the inflation period, it's better to own real estate than owning gold. No, that's correct. Um, a lot of people think gold is a, a great hedge against inflation, and just the, the data uh, out there doesn't really support that, that assertion. Mm -hmm. Real estate, though, is one of those assets that just does a phenomenal job at curbing inflation. You know, think of it you know, in terms of a, a landlord. Most of the leases that you have are indexed to inflation. Yeah, your rental is increased a lot. I this mean, year. we're we're seeing here in Massachusetts that you know rent increases are in the double thirteen yeah, percent or they're, they're double digits. Yeah. yeah, so they're pretty significant. So, you know, rising prices of your you know you can cover your rising costs. So it's actually more of the rental increase than the inflation rate. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it is amazing. It is. Yeah, no, it it is. But you know, it, but you're playing a little catch up too. Yeah. So yeah, true. so but. But yeah, no, it, it, it's generally been a good inflation hedge for that for that reason alone. But there's also the, uh, you know, idea of new construction, which costs more now to build a new house because price of lumber has gone up, price of labor has gone up, um, and supply all supply chain yeah, is really tight. Right, all all, yeah. the, all all the building materials are up, mm -hmm. so therefore the value of the house that you're going to sell is going to be higher, um, and then you know that transfers over to existing housing because. Um, the replacement cost goes up. Yep, exactly. And then the last piece of that is is that um, with inflation, and this is why I'm a, always a big, we, I think we did a video on this before, is if you get a mortgage loan, you're applying for, lock in for 30 years at a fixed rate. Don't do a variable rate, do a fixed rate. So Well, it's also true, that is definitely true. However, it depends on your needs, right? It, it's true, she's right, but the rates are so low no matter what, what if, you know, com yeah. compared to historically, four or five percent mortgage is, is still really low. Yes. Um, you know, and think about it: you had a three thousand dollar payment; it's going to stay three thousand dollars over the life of that thirty years. But meanwhile, inflation is going to drive your income up because employers are going to have to pay you more money to keep mm -hmm. up with the rising costs. Everything goes up, so it doesn't mean your purchasing power increases. It just means that, you know, people have to raise your income to a level that keeps you even with inflation and you're paying that debt off with cheaper dollars because you're getting more money exactly. so so it's yeah. it's really it's really those are the good effects of inflation but not all effects are good that's true so that brings us to how this inflation gonna affect right now the buyers and the sellers on the market right and, and this is one of the bad effects is um, the higher interest rates and inflation are going to drive buyers out of the market who are on the fringe uh, there's two things that are happening right now. Prices of homes are going up dramatically, okay? Mm -hmm. And your cost of buying those homes, because most people have to take a mortgage that's in right, order to buy right. a house. And the, with that said, that's actually drive the sellers, you know, out of the market too, because they won't be able to get what they expected. There's less buyer and the less competition. But we're, we're, we're nowhere near that point no, now. No, not yet. Yeah, that, that's, down, that's, that, that's down the road. I, but right now, it's still a great market. If you're a seller and you're thinking about it, and you have a place to land, it's a great time to sell. I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous. We're doing another article on this uh, of, of, of how egregious the, the market is for buyers. No, and, first and, is crazy. And, and right? how great it is for sellers. I mean, people are waiving mortgage contingencies now, and um, it's just... Uh, I've never seen a market like this. Yep. So, 
And the other thing about um, the uh, the higher interest rates, uh, excuse me, the, the higher inflation that's going to be a problem for homeowners on the negative side. We talked about the positives, and inflation's a great hedge, and it is. It, it definitely outweighs the cons. But but remember, you know, property taxes are going to go up as well mm. due to inflation because most of your that's property taxes go for education. Yeah. And those teachers, you know, they're going to want their income to go up when their everything else, when their co expenses go up as well. Tuition's going up, the college, and the everything's school, going right. up. So I mean, we haven't seen anything yet. I, I, it's going to get worse. I, I could see before year end double digit inflation. Um, I think the Fed's going to reassess his position and, you know, raise rates even faster than what I already indicated. So. Unfortunately, that's what we are facing right now. So what else do we have? Is it, did we cover everything in the article? Yeah, I believe so. I think we're at the end of this article. And um, if, if people have more questions, they can contact us and the information is linked below. Yeah, and, and if there's topics you want to hear about in particular, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And we'll be glad to um, bring in a professional who understands it. Lender, like, attorney, yeah, yeah, yeah. inspectors. Yeah. Recently we had a uh, discussion with a uh, uh, mortgage lender and that was a very well received uh, video. Yes. So uh, let us know, we're, we're happy to accommodate. We want to provide useful information to you and uh, you know, we, we love hearing from you. Yep, welcome to subscribe and like our video below. Very and important, um, yeah, please, please. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And See you next time. All right. Bye-bye.